Today we are thinking about the critical study of scriptures. Here at the outset, I should say that I am not, I repeat, not introducing any one particular scripture or one's content meaning. Rather, we are following an anthropological inquiry. We are following the comparativist Wilfred Cantwell Smith in asking what is scripture. Breaking down the term is a good place to start. Script has to do with writing. As the cool kids of my generation would say, no, duh. Now the suffix your denotes the act or result of something. Think about the words you know that end with your. Picture, sculpture, texture, mixture. So it's kind of a funny thing that we often think of scripture as the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, the I Ching, the Vedas, the Sutras. We tend to focus on specific writings. This to the detriment of our consideration of the acts or results related to these texts. In fact, the thing we call texts is really just a tool that people use to bring about certain activities or results. Yes, the Bible, the Quran, and all the others are all texts, but every Joe and Jane knows that these texts are not of the same quality as the junk mail in your recycling bin. People use these texts and other texts to do some pretty significant things. So were you to think long and hard about scriptures, Cantwell Smith said, you'd realize that you're thinking about a thing people do, which he called scripturalizing. He said scripturalizing is an activity, a, propen a propensity, a potentiality. It's a thing people do with texts to transcend some serious problems. Now let's just take a moment here. People do things with text to transcend problems. Given what we've said so far about scriptures and scripturalizing, you probably begin to notice that people use and appeal all sort appeal to all sorts of things to transcend their problems. They use rituals, they make gestures, they watch certain television shows. And since we're thinking about the act and result of something people do, we can construe text as a pretty broad category that includes the written, the non-written, the religious, and the secular alike. This model gives us a framework to critically observe people doing meaning-making activities. It helps us ask, who needs uses and is affected by scriptures? When and where do these problems occur that people require meaning-filled texts? What do these texts look like? Are they books like the Bible, gestures like Tai Chi, animal bones for divination, legal oaths like the Pledge of Allegiance? Why and how do these texts work? Shakespeare said that all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. The critical study of scriptures gives us a way of learning about these people and their drama, the very subject of the humanities scholar.